Hello everyone, Basic Ollie here, hope you're all doing well and welcome back to another GT Sport video. Feels like forever since I've done one of these. It's been quite a long time but it's good to be back and we're going to jump straight into things here. I've got two races for you, daily race C for this week's races, East Outer Loop I believe. And if you've seen the names in this lobby already you can see I've got a mammoth of a task if I want to get anything done or anything, any decent result in this race really. So let's get cracking. Uh, and let's get underway. So we are on the McLaren F1. Seems to be the car to be in, unless you are a bit of an alien like Quentin, who's qualified P1. I think it was actually top of the leaderboards when he did this. So Tokyo East Outer Loop then. This track has one of the longest straights known to mankind. It is literally on a motorway in Japan. So it is very, very long. I don't know the exact length of it. Uh, my, my estimations would probably be about two miles something like that two miles maybe but uh, yeah the McLaren F1 is the OP car unless like I said earlier unless you're an alien like Quinton but we get this race underway I've gone straight into this with no practice you'll have seen up except no qualifying time I just want to see what it'll be like if I start from the back and straight away then uh, you can see there's a gaggle of cars in front of me so there's four of us going into the first corner a bit hairy already and all three of the chaps around me kind of forgot that they've got cold tyres and they just bin it and this guy here um, zero there just clattered into the wall and then the Spaniard um, shoves him into the wall once more just for added pleasure I guess but uh, yeah that's um, that's how to go from P14 to P11 in two corners there folks so uh, yeah not a shabby start not too bad at all but like I said when I jumped into this race I had uh, little to no practice and I literally mean little to no practice so when you see these racing lines they're not going to be fantastic in this first race but I do improve significantly so stay tuned for that anyways our friend here iron has just gone a little bit wide um, and he's hit the wall and he's got one of those 1.5 second barrier penalties uh, seems a bit harsh but maybe in real life you'd probably have damage you'd be out of the race so you'll probably take the 1.5 second penalty to be honest now we start on the mediums you can go mediums or softs in this race you have to use both though uh, no fuel to worry about in this one i decided to go on the mediums because I'm starting near the back. As the actual race goes on, I've figured out this week as well, it's probably best that you do start on the mediums, regardless of where you are, where you are really. So the chap then serves his one and a half second penalty, puts me in P10. And you can see there, I'm just at the slipstream of Agu actually behind us, which is a bit of a surprise. But as we zoom forward, activate uh, nitrous oxide there. You can see. They kind of swap positions and what they do is they work together on the straight. So if you're doing this race this week, you'll realise it's very easy to work as a team on the straight where you just push each other along. Uh, and me going wide there in the first corner is not going to help uh, my my case at all. Uh, it's going to make it very difficult for me to solidify this top 10. But I've got four McLaren F1s there, I think, chasing me down. All, all fast drivers. This is an A-plus rated lobby, the majority of it, I believe. So all, everyone in this lobby is fully capable of setting some amazing quick lap times. So as always, you have to be on top of your game if you're in these high split lobbies. Now going through this middle sector here, um, big, big hit on the wall there. Lucky not to get a contact penalty, I have to say. Uh, and that loses me at least, at least three temps, I'd say. Um, thankfully, the guys behind me didn't take that particularly well either. And I didn't lose too much time. Through this left-hander, way too slow. And you can see it gives Miyamu 79, an absolute awesome launch. And again, I just go wide and he gets a position. And yeah, I need to snap out of it pretty quickly um, if I want to stay on with these guys. Otherwise, I'm just going to drop further and further back and it is not going to be good for anyone. So you can see in the replay, I think uh, Fatalist Chris there had a one and a half second penalty. Again, probably for wall contact. Uh, I'm lucky not to be in that group as such or have to got one. And yeah. That is good news, really, because I kind of deserved it, if we're being honest. But never mind, I'm on the back of uh, Miyamu here. Now, he decides to put his indicator to the left. Now, I'm not really sure what he meant by that, as in, I'm going to go left so you can go right. But I was like, now, nah, let's just work together. So he puts his hazards on again and says to say thank you, because there's no point. All we're going to do is trade positions, so why not work together, minimise that time lost to the boys and girls in front of us, and we'll see... If we can make up um, some time on them in front and you can see Agu by the way I don't even know where he came from he came like a missile absolute missile launches up the inside fair play gets the move done uh, and now he is on the back of Miyamu now I don't know what tyres are on as again I'm still just scraping the walls here barely staying alive in this race um, but he just yeah at, from out 
absolutely nowhere he's um, he's managed to catch up so uh, fair play to him he's recently got a wheel as well actually um, a bit off topic but um, yeah he's certainly he's up there I think he was fifth on the leaderboards um, fifth or fourth I'm not sure he'll probably correct me in the comments at the time of making this video so he's not slow at all he's one of the best in the game there's no doubt about that now he's got a wheel um, I imagine he'll only get better uh, you might notice as well in this video um, there's a few people that the cars are jumping around a little bit I'm not quite sure what's going on you have to let me know in the comments if you've had the same sort of thing uh, recently last couple of weeks the servers have been a bit of a nightmare in terms of getting kicked out of lobbies um, when you're literally joining uh, and then it just kind of frees you on the start line so everyone's kind of you know hell behind so you can't go anywhere or everyone just keeps to everyone keeps jolting around on the circuit and it's really difficult because you go around certain corners and people on literally you know they jump like five or ten meters to the left or to the right um, and it's just a completely different racing line uh, and it's really really off-putting I'm not sure what it was I had it in my stream last night and I personally thought it must be because you know I'm on an online game um, someone in my house is probably streaming at the same time I stream on I mean, Netflix or whatever and I'm streaming I thought maybe it's just my internet but this is when no one was in it was just me and it, it you can still see people were jolting around a little bit I'm not quite sure what's going on regardless start lap four this German look at the move up the inside there fantastic that was such a good move he launched that from again miles back I didn't realize that was such a good overtaking opportunity through that corner brilliant move I never I never expected that I'll be honest when I was on board and I saw that late break I thought is well he's murdered someone I thought they're gone that's that's an RIP but no yeah absolutely brilliant uh, gets the move done uh, unfortunately he does lose it um, as he goes through the second corner I think so he, he does get one position but then drops back um, and he hits the wall uh, quite hard there now straight away he knows he's in trouble so he goes defensive so he's got he's got the inside line uh, I think better off it and back out of it as well and he hits the wall again and thankfully I did back out of it because that meant I had the momentum to then switch over to the left and get the move done on the inside of that corner and now that puts us up to P9 so I think in in four laps, we've we've gained five or six positions. And then we start P14, didn't we? So we've gained five positions, so you, you take that with both hands. But now, it's lap four, so we skip ahead. It's time to go in the pits and put those soft tyres on. So like I said, started on the mediums, now we need to go on the softs. Now, the, there will be a few people that have started on the softs, and they'll eventually have to go over to the mediums, which is good for us, because we're basically going to be as fast as we can be now, because we're on the soft tyres, and yeah will have a pace advantage to anyone who's only just gone over or is now on the mediums now as we zoom forward as always when they're in these long straights I'm not going to try and bore you as we go on the long straights I'll, I'll zoom forward when I can the German behind me actually um, was giving me lots of pushes up the straight which is exactly what you want to see you want to work together to minimise the time and that was absolutely awesome you can see on the left hand side you've got a few more boys and girls coming into the pits across the line uh, another push by the Germans so thank you for that we fly past two people there. I think that was someone in, in a GTR. So big shout out to them. Now Miamu there is 2.2, but you can see it going down. Now 1.8, 1.7. That's that's the speed difference as we're working together with the German and we're catching up. So the number one tip, if if you're doing this race and you're on the straight, genuinely, unless you're going for like unless it's like lap 10 or it's for an important move that you need to make. Just don't overtake anyone on the straight until you get to the corner. It's utterly pointless because they'll just have your back. The straight is far too long and it's far too wide. You can't defend your position if you go for the overtake early on. Just just wait. Be patient. Anyways, Mimu is just nine temps off us now. Now, I do believe he's on the medium tyres on this one because I think he's starting on the softs. Uh, and he's come in. I think he, what, he come in on lap five. So he's going for a 5-5 five, five, um, strategy. You can do 4-6, you know, soft, medium or medium soft um, you know vice versa but you can also do it on five laps on each so that, I think that's what he's opted for um, I don't think he want to do six laps on the softs with the, with the heavy fuel so now he's burnt a bit more he's probably opted to go for the mediums till the end of the race but this is where I'm making a little few errors not hitting the apexes as smoothly as I should and not just not digging in I think the brake bias for this car by the way you need to have it minus two um, that's the way to go. You need to look after those rears a little bit, which is sort of quite surprising. You think the fronts, but it's actually the rears, really, uh, to give it that traction as you come out the corners. Um, that's something I didn't do. I didn't learn that until uh, later on. Um, yeah, you need to put the brake bias uh, minus two. 
in this car. But we're going to zoom forward once more, activate the nitrous oxide. You can see we're just out of the slipstream, but as we are getting pushed forward by our German friend once more behind us, we are now going to get in the slipstream. Now that is massive, it makes a big difference. Um, we are now basically getting to 183 miles an hour um, plus easy, uh, which is good to see. Now, potentially could have gone for a move up the inside there, but again, I'm not quite there. This is my first race, zero practice. We need to um, we need to go into qualifying, which is exactly what we're going to do after this. So we'll, we'll do some qualifying and I'll show you my qualifying time. And I'll try and explain to you exactly what I did to get that time. And yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed, you'll pick up some pointers. It was a pretty good time, um, but we'll, we'll talk about that once this, uh, once this race is over. Anyways, first sector, or second sector, I think it might be, we're purple. Excellent to see, absolutely awesome. Going through this sector here, then I kept it in fifth gear, just um, touched the wall there, scraping it, lost about three or four miles an hour, um, but nothing too dramatic. We're absolutely fine. We've, we've sailed through it, and you can see this is what I mean about the server thing. So, Miyamu would hit the wall. And then he's kind of jumped to left. I was a massive hit of the wall there. You can really see uh, my rustiness. So I do apologise. I just wanted to try something from the back to see how quickly I could get up to speed. I'm not doing bad. I don't think I'm doing bad at all. We're, we're still fighting for a top 10 here, a top 9. So it, we can't be doing that bad, can we? We must be doing half decent. So when we get some practice in, we should be up the front. Shouldn't we, really? Well, we'll find out. Again, breaking point there. You can see he was <laughs> he breaks late and then suddenly jolted back. It was weird. It was really strange, but this is what I had to, I've had to deal with it um, for a couple of weeks now. Um, again, let me guys know, let me know guys in the comments, boys and girls, if you had the same thing. Um, but yeah, anyways, as you can see, I zoomed past. I gave him an, an initial nudge, and then when I knew there was no one behind me, I went for the move, because I thought that was a smart thing to do in a slap eight. I've got the soft tyres on, I want to have the advantage in the middle sector. So I gave him a push down the straight, and when I realised I had enough time to overtake him, but he wouldn't have enough time to retaliate, that's when I did it. So that's what I mean. So I work with them, but as soon as you know there's a good opportunity to overtake, and you can fly in the middle sector, that's when you go for it. And that's what I'm going to try and do. However, I'll be honest with you, it's not worked out so far, because he's right up my bumper, so it's not exactly like I've, I've broken away. Important section through here, absolutely love, would you call this a, a chicane? I suppose you call it a chicane. Inch perfect there. It's exactly, that's much more like it, much, much more like it. Going through here as well, you shouldn't have to break, it's just the lift of the throttle uh, it should go to about 50% or less. Uh, same here, really, uh, just the lift of the throttle, uh, and then you should be absolutely fine. Also, you have to adjust how early you lift off the throttle as the tyre wear comes into play. Um, you just want to get as close to the walls as you can. Every time you go around the corner, don't scrape it, obviously. That, that's not what you want to do, but you want to get as close as you can. Make the track as wide as you can make it, um, so your car can take the, the best line. Uh, Breaking as the shadow appears, just before the 100 meter board. Now Moo goes for an absolute savage lunge there. Now it's quite clear he didn't mean that, I think he's just outbraked himself. Easy thing to do when you're doing like 180, 190 miles an hour, isn't it? It's, it's an easy thing to do. Um, either way, we've got the position all hunky-dory. So two laps later, final lap, we're going to go into the hairpin once more. Now I had a decision to make, I could either let him go and then use the slipstream to try and retaliate, or take a really tight line, trying to get a super fast exit, and hopefully that would be enough. Now the gap was four tenths, so they came out the hairpin, but you can see I really struggled with the rears, which is a really weird thing to say, um, but that's, yeah, that's what's gonna cause me major issues here. And he's gonna get closer and closer and closer, and it is just not gonna be enough. And he's gonna cross the line, uh, and he's gonna beat me. <laughs> by 23 hundredths of a second. Fair play, fair, fair play. Um, did, it when, did it when it meant, you know, when it meant the most, but uh, yeah, fair play to me. Anyways, qualifying that, let's go through it. So breaking after 100 meter board, nice and tight, all the way to the inside. I like to keep two wheels across the white lines on the inside there. As the line appears on the left-hand side of the wall, yeah, on the wall, on the left, I should say, on turn two, that's when you turn in. Uh, you've got to be really aggressive. Turn in earlier than you expect. Turn in much earlier than expected from turn two. Super tight lines through here. Again, between the white stuff here. And again, through the right-hander. Uh, let's call it turn four, I guess. Um, that's where you want to be. Braking on the 50-meter board above you, into fifth gear, uh, and just minimize the steering input as much as you can to scrub off as the least amount of speed you can. Absolutely lightning through there. Again, let go of the throttle, uh, and then straight back on it as soon as you're mid-apex. Same here, let go of the throttle, about 50%. And then, once more, plant your foot down. Make sure not to hit the walls. So we're up on our delta. We are purple. Breaking at the 50-meter board once more. Nice and tight. Into fourth gear. 
through to right, through to left, transferring the weight of a car beautifully, not hitting the wall on the right hand side. And you can see my delta goes up, and we're half a tenth. Then we're a tenth, so we're a tenth up now. Previous best is a 57.094, braking just before the 100 meter board, nice and tight. You can go first gear here if you like, I'll go in second for a bit more stability. Maybe you do lose time, in fact you do lose time if you don't control it, or you go in second. But I like the stability, I can see my delta was going up, and we are going to cross the line eventually once we get there. And it looks like it's going to be about 10, well 1.4 should we go, yeah it's going to be about 1.4. Uh, temps up, so that should comfortably put us in the 56s. So that's 56.9. That should be so. That's a, there you go, 56.953. I'll take it. I will take that. So that should put us with the big boys. I hope. So let's do race two then, and let's see what happens in this one. So fingers crossed, we're, uh, we're higher up. Let's have a look. We are. I can't see myself. Wait for that to load. I think. Yeah, there you go. I'm P4. Could just see myself in the background there. So yeah, we're P4. We're surrounded by. Fusa, Digit, Epic Toby, uh, Nylon, um, and there's a certain person in P8, but I'm going to do the most Gran Turismo thing ever, or anti Gran Turismo thing ever, and not say his name even though he's in my video. So he's in my GT Sport video, he's not in the thumbnail, he's not in the title, and we're not going to race against him, I know. It's like literally against the YouTube GT Sport algorithm, but I'm going to do it. I've not mentioned his name, you can just see him, okay? I won't say it. <laughs> Anyways, race is underway. P4, much better. Let's see what we can do in this race. Uh, starting on the softs this time. Did realise throughout the week, or you know, the next day, because it's only Tuesday, that it is still better to start on the mediums. It, it, it just is. It, it, the mediums just seem to work. They switch on. If you're in the slipstream, don't waste your soft tyres early on. The best thing to do, even regardless of what position you're in, start on those mediums. It's the best way to go. Don't go on the softs. You just burn them out for no reason. And you'll be stuck in a slipstream and you can't really go anywhere. Um, to be honest, you know, you want those soft tyres to work in the middle sector, but there's no point if you're in a big group like this. What's the point? So that was my that was my mistake in this in this race. But I'm gonna make an even worse one as we go on, so watch out for that. As you can see again, you can see the cars are just shifting left to right, left to right, so it is slightly off-putting and it does yeah, there you go. See look at that job there. But I am trying my best to deal with the situation. Uh, I, say, I say situation like it's a like it's a major thing, but um, yeah, I'm just playing a racing game. It's fine. Uh, yeah, so nice on the apex there, nice on the apex on the outside, apex on the outside. Uh, made sure I didn't clip the wall on the outside, just like Digit did a little bit there. And um, we're going to look for our, our braking marker here. There you go, just just before the shadow. I'm going to go around the outside because I, I want a nice smooth exit. Make sure you don't clip or go over the white lines on the inside of that hairpin. You will get a penalty for it if you go more. Well, if you go four wheels over the white line, like you should in any any track, really, um, you will get a penalty for it. So watch out for that. Anyways, first lap completed within half a second of the leader. Now it's time to see if all the boys, the lads, are going to work together on this one. We've made a gap of 1.2 seconds of the people behind us now, and that's growing. So yeah, it looks like we're going to work together on this one. So push each other along. Um, I've decided not to. I don't know why, why did I do that. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Anyways, regardless, it kind of works out in the end because uh, Nylon goes over to the right and I can push him. And it looks like we've got the inside line for this corner. And I am going to go and do my own attempt at a savage move up the inside. And it works a treat. Absolute treat. So it went from P4 to P2 there in one corner. Um, timed the braking to perfection. And I absolutely loved it. So that is awesome to see. Now I'm going to try and work with Nylon here. Uh, this is the pole sitter. So we're going to see if we can work with him and pull away from the chaps, uh, Toby and Digit here. So let's see if we can pull away from them. Um, again, nice through there. Tires are nicely warmed up now. Hitting the wall, that is kind of a thing you do in this race. You can't seem to escape it. This is where you could probably say not having damage actually worked in your favour because I think 90% of the people in this lobby wouldn't have made it including myself, but maybe I would have adjusted the line, who knows, who knows. Slight tap of the wall there, but nothing major. Uh, gap still about half a second, six tenths, it's not really growing, to be honest. We'll have to see what we can do on the straight, maybe working together, maybe Digit and Epic Toby don't bother working together. We'll see. Right, let's give uh, Nylon a push on the back straight then. Let's see where he's going to go. Decide to stay behind him on this one, like I said. Uh, Want to work with him here. Now... As it starts to glitch out and move about and stuff like that, you're going to see that actually we've already made the gap. So it looks like Epic Toby 
if you have a look at the time's left hand side, had made the move. Now this is where I make a massive mistake as we go to lap five. I put the soft tyres on again. Yeah. Just honestly, how many times have you done that? Because I have done it so many times and it's infuriating. You go in the pit and you've, for some reason you, you think to yourself, right, I need to change the tyres, let's do it quickly. And you just spam that A button or that X button or whatnot and you just don't even think and it's just so stupid. It's such a stupid thing to do. Um, it's not going to make a difference. You've got plenty of time to choose the right tyre, but you still do it. You still do it and it is just us infuriating. So I had to pit on lap 8 again to put the mediums on and we crossed the line and ended up in P10. Or P11 I should say. Absolutely fuming with myself. I threw it away. Pointless. I don't know why I did it. Well I do know why I did it. I was an idiot and I just kept spamming the wrong button. Um, well the right button. And I just didn't bother changing my tyres. Just stupid. Well I changed them. Just put the wrong ones on. So incredibly frustrating because I've worked so well with uh, Nylon and it looks like we could have got a P1 or a P2 and a, a fantastic result. But your boy being as basic as he is makes a basic error and yeah that one that first place has added another one to it and I actually finished 11th but uh, yeah few few mistakes made in this one but we'll learn from it I need to take my time need to take my time as I drop my phone that's that's awkward anyways nice outro <laughs> right as always if you enjoyed that please leave a like subscribe if you're new around here we're looking to get to 20k fingers crossed as soon as we can and I'll catch you for the next one take care Ta-da.